So there's been a big computer outage uh, last week that affected airports, banks, hotels, hospitals. I mean, it affected uh, a lot, a lot of uh, institutions. Eight million or more computers affected by this. Uh, all running Microsoft Windows, but more importantly, all running software from CrowdStrike. This is Sky News and a special program on the global IT outage. It's thrown the world into digital disarray, hitting across industries and continents. Now, in this video, I want to look at the technical issues. What happened? Why did it go wrong? What was the actual thing that happened? Because this folds in very nicely to several other videos I've got on this channel about virtual memory, about tasks and processes, about kernels and so on. So this is a real world example showing you the implications of some of those technologies when it goes wrong. It's great when it goes, it's all good. You know, we, we all use our Peter, but when they go wrong, why has it gone wrong? And that's what I want to look at. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Here, airport checking counters were reduced to pen and paper. Health systems froze and broadcasters were knocked off the air. Okay, so as I said, I've got several videos here that I'll leave a link to in the description covering things like virtual memory, uh, tasks, processes, threads, kernels, uh, task switching. In fact, I've even written a multitasking operating system for the Raspberry Pi Pico. So that's simpler because you're dealing with a microcontroller rather than an x86 or a full 64-bit ARM processor. And I show you the basic principles of how you do context switching, switching from one task to another. So all of that stuff's available here on this channel. Links in the description if you want to find out more about all of this technology, even down to the C code that I show you on how to do it on a microcontroller. Okay, so let's have an overview of how modern multitasking operating systems work. This applies to Windows, Linux, Mac, iOS, Android, all of these modern multitasking, multitasking operating systems because they can do multiple tasks, more than one thing at once. So if you're sitting at your desk using a Windows PC watching this video, you'll have a web browser open. Maybe you've also got the Windows Explorer open. Maybe you've got Spotify or Tidal or whatever playing music in the background. Maybe you've got another app open, you know, a spreadsheet or something. You've got several apps all open at once, several programs all open at once, and you can just flick between them. And when you move on to something else, the video can keep playing, the music still plays because it's multitasking. It's doing more than one thing at once. Now, most processors nowadays have multiple cores, you know, four cores, eight cores, whatever. And so your PC is actually running multiple programs simultaneously because one is running on core zero, another one is running on core one. But even if there are more programs than number of cores, what it's doing is it's switching between them very quickly. So the time it takes you to move up your mouse to the address and start to type in a Google search is an absolute eon for a computer and it's done thousands of operations. Remember, it's running in gigahertz speed. So it's done lots and lots of things in that time and it can switch between all the apps, including the background music you've got playing, including the video you've got running, including the spreadsheet you've got. It can switch between all of them all at once and you don't even notice. So that's multitasking. Now, these multitasking operators run in two modes. User mode, which is where all of the programs like your web browser are running. And then there's kernel mode. Now in user mode, the programs are running and they have limited access to the hardware and they're running in what's called virtual memory. Again, I've got a video about that, how virtual memory works here on this channel. So in virtual memory, it's not physical memory, it's a virtual a full set of addresses that are then mapped to some physical ones in the actual computer memory. And as the program's running, it's doing its thing, that's fine. If it has a bug, if it does something it shouldn't do, then it might crash. And all that happens is Windows said, sorry, you're now in an illegal state. You don't know what's going on, which is going to kill you. And so suddenly the app just disappears. I'm sure you've had that happen. You were using it and suddenly it just goes. Maybe Windows comes up with a little dialogue saying, oh, we're trying to find out if there's any other information uh, about this. But basically it's gone and you have to restart it and it starts again. And that's great in user mode because each of these applications are isolated. They're running in their own virtual space. And when they die, you just kill it off and then you restart it. Now, an operating system also has a kernel mode. That's where it's no longer running in this virtual space, but it's running in the real address space. And that's where it does the mapping between these virtual processes and their virtual space over to the physical one. That's where it actually accesses hardware like 
the graphics card or the sound card or accesses the storage. And that's all what happens in the very core, the kernel of the operating system. Now, operating system will allow you to write drivers. So for example, if you have a graphics card, it needs to have that lowest level of access so that it can talk to the graphics card and actually get, you know, send all that data, receive it all back, uh, not worrying about all this virtual stuff that's going on. It's happening at the real low level. Same for other types of hardware. Now, Windows allows you to write drivers. So your GPU has a driver, the sound card has a driver, the network card has a driver. But you can also write drivers that do other things. Now, if something goes wrong while the operating system is in kernel mode, and that's uh, either inside a driver or inside the actual code provided by the OS, Microsoft, Apple, whoever, then when something goes wrong, it has no choice but to stop because something has gone wrong, it doesn't know what state it's in, and it can't carry on, so it stops, and that's when you get the blue screen of death. And what do I mean by something goes wrong? Typically, because you're now dealing in this area of memory that's actual physical memory, if it tries to access a part of memory it's not allowed to access, and generally anything that's address zero, or in the first few uh, bytes the first few K of that zero address, they're illegal. They're reserved for certain things. And zero is often used inside of programming languages to mark the end. The end of a string is with a zero, for example, inside C and C++. And so when it hits a zero, it says, oh, I've, I've finished the end of this thing. But if you say to it, by mistake, access address zero, then it goes, I can't do that. That's an illegal address. And then the kernel has to panic and it panics and it stops. And Linux does this, and Android does this, and Windows, they all have the same mechanism. Now, if it happens inside of a driver, so you've got, let's say, your GPU driver, then it does something and it panics, then it can uh, make the whole system go to blue screen of death, and the driver has to be updated. Now, in this particular instance, all the machines affected are running a piece of software called CrowdStrike. Now, CrowdStrike Falcon is an advanced security software. It's not just a virus scanner. It also tries to do protection against various types of uh, malicious software, including stuff that tries to infiltrate the kernel through some kind of unauthorized route. So it itself has a driver that runs in kernel mode. And so remember, if that driver does something wrong while it's in kernel mode, then it will cause the whole system to crash. And that's exactly what's happened. CrowdStrike pushed an update. That update had an error in it, and the error occurred while it was in kernel mode. So as a result of that, it couldn't just die and then you have to restart it. It had to kill the whole operating system and you get the blue screen of death. And what's worse is because you then killed the whole operating system, the only way to recover is to reboot the operating system in a safe mode. In this case, Windows has a safe mode which doesn't load any drivers, loads the barest and minimum of stuff, and then you can go into the right directory, they give you information on the CrowdStrike website, and delete a particular file which gets rid of this update. And then when you reboot, it all comes back to life and the error is no longer there. Now, of course, this spawns a whole bunch of different questions about why does CrowdStrike have a kernel driver that can affect 8 million computers just because an update's been pushed out? I mean, that's a really interesting question from an infrastructure point of view. Are we really running all of our hospitals and airports on this kind of technology? There's a whole bunch of questions around memory safe languages. Why is a programming language allowed to produce code that can access memory that it shouldn't be allowed to access. And there is talk about, you know, you should be using Rust because that doesn't allow that kind of thing. So there's a whole bunch of other questions that uh, surround this and maybe things will change going forward. Maybe people will look at different solutions. I surely hope that some of these big organizations will wonder about their choices uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, protecting their, their software. Why are they running a kernel driver on something that's connected to the internet. So it gets an update and then it kills the whole machine. That's basically what happened. So I lo hope lots of questions are gonna be asked, but that's not for this video. This video is what technically happened. And that's what technically happened. A kernel driver access illegal memory, caused them the whole kernel to panic and stop, bring up that blue screen of death. Okay, my name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this overview of what happened. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, hey, stick around subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.